a beautiful fall afternoon here in Green Bay. Temperature in the mid 50s, cloudy. The wind may be an issue, kicking up, and the Packers in those circa 1920 uniforms back when they were the Acme Meat Packers. And getting ready to take on the Rams. Some of the key inactives today. Mike Sims Walker, who had been a starting receiver to the bench. Remember, the Rams also put Danny Amendola on injured reserve since their bye week. And Chad Clifton, the veteran offensive lineman, out for the next two to three weeks, not on injured reserve. And in his spot, Marshall Newhouse, the rookie, will start at left tackle. Man, I love this stadium. Huh? Can you just feel it? The Rams have won the toss, elected to receive, and things are happening here at Lambeau Field. It's Quinn Porter in the end zone, and the Ram offense will take over on the 20-yard line. Only 46 points in the four games they've played, but there's always hope when you have a quarterback like Sam Brown. Well, he can make all the throws. They have to protect him, though, and that goes for the running backs as well. Steven Jackson's got to be better in pass protection. The receivers have to make plays and catch the ball for Sam Bradford. And then up front, I think the big key is getting Jacob Bell back. He should be a big shot in the arm for these guys offensively. They gave up seven sacks versus the Redskins two weeks ago. That has to get better. Steven Jackson breaks a tackle and gets out to the 25-yard line. Desmond Bishop made the stop from his linebacker spot in the Green Bay defense. An excellent second half last week in the win over Atlanta. And that group right there is outstanding when you talk about these down three. And they really set the edge in terms of the run game at the point of attack. Linebackers, they'll get after it. Clay Matthews only one sack. And then back in the secondary, they have not played great. But they are very, very good out on the islands at the corner. Jackson is a receiver, splits out on the right side. That's second down. Bradford passes complete and for a first down up near the 39 yard line. Greg Salas, the rookie receiver. Yeah, I and think there's a gonna, penalty play. I think they're going to get Sappho. Offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's on Roger Saffold, who's trying to block Eric Walden, who's coming around the corner. And here's Saffold here, Walden around the corner. Just got the hands out wide and then just hooks him from the V of the neck. Walden, but I, excuse me, Chris, I do like the fact that St. Louis has jumped into some no huddle here early. Listen, this is what they're good at. Steve Spagnolo knows it. Sam Bradford has been the best this year when they're operating out of the no huddle. Expect a lot of it. Second and 15, Bradford throws and completes. Oh, and still going. That's Lance Kendricks, the Wisconsin rookie. All the way down inside the 40 of Green Bay. That stiff arm was nasty. A 45-yard gain. Love the play designed by Josh McDaniels. They're going to boot Sam Bradford out here. Kendricks is going to get out in front of the play. There you see him in motion. This thing's all on time. It's perfect. Now watch this straight arm by Morgan Burnett. Bang, sit down. And remember, Morgan Love Burnett it. is playing with a cast with a on his hand. And he said that it would take some adjusting. Maybe it had something to do with the missed tackle. Steven Jackson gets a first down inside the 30 and still powering down to the 26 in Green Bay. Boy, Lance Kendrick's off to a very good start. You just saw the catch in the big run after the catch with the, the wicked stiff arm. Here he gets a good block to seal the edge for Steven Jackson. He grew up a Packer fan. He's also torn because he was a Brewer fan. And now, of course, in St. Louis, he roots for the Cardinals as well. Jackson carries again. Productive yardage. Jackson said he's going to treat today like it's the opening, like it's a 12-week season after pulling that injury in the opener against Philadelphia. Absolutely. 23 carries on the season. He has got fresh legs. And I think we all know when he's been healthy, Yards from scrimmage, he's been one of the better, if not the best guy in the National Football League over the last several years. They hurry to the line once again, but then take their time. Jackson's a receiver out on the line. That's a penalty here. Also, offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty, but second down. That is on Lance Kendricks, who had a couple of drops in the loss to Washington in their last game. That's one of the things with that hurry-up. Everybody's got to be in sync. 
Yeah, and I know talking to Steve Spagnolo how much they worked on those fundamentals and those details during the off week. That's just all about youth. It can all be great in practice. You get out here with the pressure and the game on the line, and guys slip back into being younger players cover, and cover, making cover. Cover. simple mistakes. Second down 11. Now Steven Jackson is a receiver on the right side. Bradford on. Brandon Gibson. He had exactly what he wanted, Chris. And I like the fact that Sam Bradford's getting the ball out on time. This is all about the fast pass. Get him a little confidence. Brandon Gibson just tripped coming out of his route there. But, boy, I, I love pro football because you think 5-0 versus 0-4. These are professional players coached by professionals. This is not an impossible task for the Rams. Before the snap. Timeout St. Louis. That's their first. And Hockley, our referee, the Rams call time, facing third and 11. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Rams have not been very productive on third down. There are six defensive backs in for the Packers. Now, having said that, that's been an Achilles heel for this Packers defense. They have not been very good at stopping people on third down. They're going to run it to Steven Jackson. It'll be fourth down. And I don't mind the play call. You, you play it safe. You're down in the scoring zone. The worst thing that could have possibly happened right there is you get a big penalty on your offensive line for a hold or you end up taking a sack. So I like the fact that you get pushed out of the scoring zone. I like the fact he's just going to turn and hand it to Steven Jackson on a little single back power. But you're a winless team and you're on the road and you're moving the football. But you got to get points and you've made too many mistakes in clutch situations. It's a 47 yard field goal try for Josh Brown. Six out of seven this year. The win, blow, the kick. And no points for the Rams. An impressive opening drive stalls and we're scoreless Rams and Packers. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Packers offense takes the field averaging just under 35 points a game. The number one offense in the NFL. We need team. We need get out. Hut, hut. Lift it to aid. Lift it to. Aaron Rodgers gives to Ryan Grant. Knocked out at the 42 of Green Bay. And Aaron Rodgers, 14 touchdowns, just two interceptions. The top-rated passer in the NFL, and some offensive line changes because of injury. Yeah, and I think Jermichael Finley and Greg Jennings both have such unbelievable matchup problems. Marshall Newhouse is starting out at left tackle for Chad Clifton. Josh Sitton, the right guard, one of the best in the business. Bulaga, of course, has missed the last couple of games. The right tackle with a knee injury. Green 18. Green 18. Grant. First down Packers. And for the Rams, they had an injury to Bradley Fletcher. That's seven quarterbacks injured going back through training camp. Up front, Chris Long with three sacks. Yeah, Chris has got such a great motor. I like his matchup on Belaga today. How about Brady Papinga coming back to play against his old team, the Green Bay Packers? Chamberlain starting for Ben Lieber today. And here is where they have just been hammered with injuries. There's the old Packer, Al Harris, who's going to be matched up on this football field a lot today with Greg Jennings. Rodgers over the middle, complete. That's Jermichael Finley. You're going to see a lot of zone out of the St. Louis Rams today. A lot of zone coverage trying to keep things in front of them. And when you start talking about those two deep safeties that are playing half field, 
you're going to start talking about tight ends that are getting down the seam, and that's exactly what Jermichael Finley does right here. 6'5, almost 250, a gain of 20. So, backer drag continues. Couple of runs, a quick toss. Green 18! Green 18! Brian Gray. Struggles for some extra yards. And at running back, James Starks came in averaging 4.4, Ryan Grant 4.5. At the moment, it's share of the load, but eventually, who takes over? Well, here? I think James Starks has is, is got the younger legs and has the bigger upside, and he'll probably get more touches here early in the season. This is a throwing team to set up the run, and I know Mike McCarthy wants to have both of those backs cranked up for a big December run in the weather. From the 28th of St. Louis. Rodgers completes to Ryan Grant, who has another Green Bay first down inside the 16-yard line. A 12-yard pickup, and first and 10 Packers. And cl classic Tampa 2 coverage. you got two deep safeties. Laurinaitis is going to bail out of there, leaves a huge void. Little check down for Ryan Grant, and that's just Aaron Rodgers taking what the defense gives him. Sees that shell coverage, everybody drops back to their landmarks in the zone. Easy pickings to the running back. Donald Driver on the yeah. right, James on the left. Rodgers in trouble, and the Rams get him. There's a penalty flag thrown at the 20-yard line, but Gary Gibson got the sack on Rodgers. It's like this one's going against the Packers for holding. Holding offense, number 74. The penalty is declined. Brings up second down. That is on Marshall Newhouse, relative of Robert Newhouse, the former Cowboy. And there he is there out, out here for Chad Clifton today. They've been very, very happy with him. James Hall, he's locked up with him. Ooh, rough call as Hall tried to come back inside. So it's second and 17 after the Rams get their seventh sack of the season. And this their fifth game. Roger! Starks the running back. Rogers off the hands and incomplete with Donald Driver. The Packers the least drops of any team in the National Football League. And he's your all-time reception yardage leader in Packer history. A number of catches. But through the hands of Driver. Well, and all that's the quarterback. I mean, they rarely drop him because the ball is extremely accurate. That is a perfectly thrown ball from Aaron Rodgers. And I'll tell you what else builds off of his accuracy and his laser precision is the yards after the catch. This is the best group in the National Football League, Chris, when you look at their wide receivers and running after they catch the football because of Aaron Rodgers' accuracy. So third and 17. Set up the screen to James Starks. And the Rams running out of bounds. James Warrenitis, leading tackler on the Rams once again coming into the game. The former Ohio State Buckeye forces a fourth down for the pack. And that'll bring on Mason Crosby, who has not missed this year. In fact, with this kick, going back to last year, he would tie the Packer record of 17 consecutive field goals made. Chris Jackie holding that. This from 32 yards out to break a scoreless first quarter. And the kick is good. 17 in a row in the books with Jackie. And the defending Super Bowl chance for the 3 0 first quarter lead over the Rams. Today's game is sponsored by the Ford F-150, the only truck available with EcoBoost by Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest, most reliable 4G network, and by Chase. Don't get shortchanged. Get your cash back with Chase Freedom. Here in Green Bay, it's your Michael Fidley who had the 20-yard catch. His right arm bleeding. The medical staff attending to him as he had checked out was not in. The last play when Packers settled for a field goal and Mason Crosby with someone holding the ball for him so the wind doesn't blow it off the tee. In the sun, Quinn Porter is going to have to down it. 
So the weather already, the elements playing some tricks with what's going on as the Rams will take over on offense, trailing by three. Rams offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels has had some problems getting this offense going with Sam Brown. Well, the issue there on the early downs has led to their problems on third down. Look, they've been without their early down slayer for most of the season, that being Steven Jackson. So as he stays healthy and does what he does, those early down numbers, Chris, should improve. Bradford to throw. Waits on a nice catch by Denario Alexander. And Denario Alexander in his second year out of Missouri got the start over Mike Sims Walker. We'll see plenty of Austin Pettis, the rookie from Boise State, but anything to improve the air game as they hurry up back to the line. And they are going to attack the perimeter with Denario Alexander. He is a matchup problem at six foot five inches tall. They only need one for a first. Jackson. Penalty flag comes in as he is stopped short of the 30 yard line. Holding offense number 86. Can you have penalty for the second down? It's on Michael Huaman Nawanui, the tight end who is back healthy. <laughs> and he ends up holding Clay Matthews. Watch 52, who just wrecks stuff when he comes in on the run game and he gets held right there and that's what they want for for Steven Jackson and Clay Matthews told us look we're going to hold ourselves at the point of attack we're going to take care of our gap we're going to get Steven Jackson running sideways and when you get that 240 going sideways he's a whole different animal second and 11 Bradford has to throw it's almost intercepted Clay Matthews had a shot at it it'll be third down I don't think Lance Kendricks knew he was in the route and worthy of catching this football. I mean, he never turns He's to playing. locate the ball. He's out there playing something else, and Clay Matthews wants that one back. Kendricks played a little defense, and that's third and 11. Penalties, three already for the Rams have put him in tough spots. Alexander can't hold on. The Rams have dropped 13% of their throws, second most in the NFL. Boy, Sam Bradford has got to be frustrated. Everything lined up perfectly. They were able to pick up the blitz. Everybody in protection. The ball came out on time. Denario Alexander beat, beat the zone on the post route. Sam throws a perfect ball. And likely story for those Rams with wideouts right off his hands. So Donnie Jones to punt. Now he's at the moment the wind is in his face, at least so it appears. And the ball may have touched a matter. Let's see, it's down right at midfield. And the official says no down by the Rams first. It was short and rolling around. So again, terrific field position for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers as the Rams can't hang on. Forget the World Series begins in the National League City Wednesday night on Fox. The Texas Rangers are in. And fans in Wisconsin excited about the Brewers and the Packers trying to go to six and zero with a three nothing lead. Starts the running back at first and ten. We need team. We need team. An excellent defensive play by James Barnes. I was talking to James before the game, and, and football is the ultimate team sport, and we know that, and here's Laurinaitis here. He's coming on a run blitz, and he is going to smash this thing right in the backfield. No chance there. Nice tackle for loss, but he said, look, it's an ultimate team sport. We all understand that, but it's played by individuals, and what we stress the whole bye week is win your job, win the next play, win individually. Chris, you do that 11 times, and collectively, you're going to win as a football team. That was a win there for Warren Rodgers. Rodgers at second and 13. The pass is complete. That's Jennings near the 40. What's going to gain for it? Here's Kirk Metalfield. Well, Buffalo was down 7 0 to the Giants. First play after the kickoff following Ahmad Bradshaw's touchdown. Fred Jackson, 80 yards, outruns everybody into the end zone, tying the game. And Chris and Tim, I don't have to tell you, Fred Jackson out of my alma mater. You take it away from there. 
Should we say it together? Cole, Cole Collins. Collins. We're for better two went to school. Not too big fella. I think the country is well aware. They're well aware of the Buffalo Bills as well. On third and two, Rogers a quick pitch. That's John Cole. The fullback is stopped short of the first down. Let's see if Mike McCarthy is going to be the Riverboat gambler here. And go for it. No fans are chanting. Excellent defensive series by the Rams. Yeah, very, very good play. Tough field position. Very good play by Quinn Michael there coming off the edge. So Tim Maste is in to punt and Austin Pettis back to receive a high kick over his son. He's waving the son in the eyes. He holds it in. That's progress for him, a fair catch. You go back to the last Ram game against Washington when he took on three hits. Well, you know those Boise State guys, they don't know any better. They just want to compete and, and go make a play. I, I would think that he has been instructed heavily to win in doubt, raise that hand for a fair catch today. 24 yard punt playing the field position game in a double header day on Fox. Next weekend, the Bears and Bucks over in London. Packers, Vikings, and Rams, Cowboys. America's game of the week. Okay, enough of the self-inflicted wounds for the Rams offense. The penalties and the drops can't have it. Cadillac Williams is in. Bradford throws, completes to Kendricks. His second catch of the game, he stays in bounds. Lance Kendricks, who went to Wisconsin, Grew up a Packer fan, said he was excited to come back and play the Packers. As so they go no huddle, back to the line. Kendrick's already with two catches. And they move him around everywhere. He'll line up his ace back in the backfield, split out. Battle on Williams' carry. Kendricks is a very good blocker. And, and here's what I think. First you, down ramps, by the way, on that carry. When you look at Lance Kendricks, is I think that his menu was so big. When he got to St. Louis as a second round pick, no OTAs. That's a thousand snaps missed without the organized team activity practices. And I think his menu was too big. I think they streamlined that, streamlined that over the bye week. Less stuff for him to do, which will allow him to think less and play better. On first and ten, pass is complete. With Salas, rookie receiver out of Hawaii. We'll see more action because of Sims Walker inactive. They picked up Nick Miller, receiver who was also inactive. And after a gain of 11, the Rams have a fresh set of downs. And this is huge, weathering the first quarter here. And you see the, the ball control there. Look, the Rams have been slammed in the first quarter, both offensively and defensively. This should help build their confidence. Down Rams into Packer territory. He's been in this entire series instead of Steven Jackson. A 13 yard gain by the former Buccaneer. And he's a great story. Major surgery on both knees. Oh, he thought he was done. That, after he had that first one down in Tampa, they told him that was a career ender. What he's been able to come back from is remarkable. Now that stays in with three tight ends and carries again. Maybe a yard. He carried the load when Steven Jackson went out with that thigh injury in the opener. Yeah, and then he got a hamstring. And like I said, he was down in Tampa. He was so good for a guy who had just been hammered with those with those knee injuries. Good third down back, good pass protection. And he splits out as a wide receiver, Cadillac way on the left. And suck it down. Accepted. The pass intended for Denario Alexander, but Tremont Williams read it well. Well, and he's been watching tape because he knows in those down and distance situations, they love running this little stick route where they stick a guy in here and then pivot back outside. And Denario Alexander's the guy running the pivot route. There it is. Tremont Williams knew that route before he ran it. Third down. Open, open, open. Open. 
Bradford's pass is caught by Greg Salas. I, I waited because there were two Packers all over him. How did that happen? It's short of the first down. And Greg Salas goes down to the ground. You're going to see him here. He goes out. Now he falls down to the ground. Tremont Williams will go over his back, going for the interception, and somehow, some way, Salas gets it. Rams are going on fourth down. Watch Kendricks, the tight end, on that little pivot round. For Alexander, no. The Packers hold and will take over on downs. Tremont Williams with excellent coverage. Rams drive stalls. That one surprises me a little bit, trying to get vertical for a home run on a short down and distance situation. Kendricks has been the guy in those situations as an inside receiver. And from up here, he looked like he was open on that play. Well, the Rams have moved the ball well, but don't have anything to show for it. The Packers have a field goal for Mason Prosper with the wind at their back, sort of. It's swirling here at Lambeau. And Aaron Rodgers takes over for the 41 with Starks the running back. Aaron Rodgers, the high throw, incomplete. Intended for Jermichael Finley back in the game after that bruised arm. It'll be second and ten. Well, and the Rams are doing exactly what we talked about in the open with Steve Spagnuolo. They're playing shell coverage with those two deep safeties, and if they do a lot of that, as we and anticipate and expect, Lauren Nitus is going to be down in the middle of the field on Finley most of the afternoon. Roger. Starks has it. And gets knocked out of bounds short of midfield. So it will be third and short. That was an eight yard pickup. The Rams secondary is held up well as the end of the quarter winds down. And the Rams, heavy underdogs on the road and winless, but hanging in there with the defending Super Bowl champs. After one quarter at Lambeau Field, the Packers lead the Rams 3 0. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages. Second quarter at Lambeau Field, Packers lead by three on first down. Third and two, correction on that. They're going to run it to John Coon again on a third down, and maybe his second effort got him the first down. You got to love John Kuhn if you're a Green Bay Packer fan because he is so much more than a fullback. Chris, he runs, he catches, he blocks. And they're going to call for a measurement here. Tell me what you think. Has a couple of touchdowns on the season. And they got him stacked up right there at the line of scrimmage. Now he's going to fall forward. Where's the ball when he goes down? Looks like it's going to be right on it as they bring the chains out. This is going to be short. They had a fourth and short, decided to kick it away. Well, this they got to bring a big heavy personnel and pound this one. Tom Crabtree, extra tight end is in. James Starks is in. On fourth and inches. The Ram defense has hung in there so far. Look at James Lowe and Ines down there getting guys jacked up to get a big stop here. Starts first down Packers. Inside the 35. James Starks with a 15 yard run on fourth and inches. And they just smash this side of the line, just down. Finley ends up getting a nice out block as well. Watch what happens here. Brady Papinga slips, falls down. Kuhn gets a wrap block. Finley gets a kick out block, and that's a huge hole. Rodgers has it. He's rolling left. Toward the end zone. And touchdown, Packers, James Jones. He's 
there anybody better than this guy right here out of the pocket throwing off the run. All the action going that way. This takes forever to develop the deep over route. There's the over route from James Jones coming from the opposite side of the field and just a perfect throw. Aaron Rodgers off the run is the best in the business. His 15th touchdown pass, which leads everybody in the National Football League, a 35-yard toss to James Jones in their throwback jerseys. You can put them in anything, and the Packers can score. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers by the Miller Lite Aluminum Pint, four more ounces of that great Pilsner taste, and by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Here's the touchdown. Look, Justin King's beat off of his alignment. He's playing outside leverage. Stewart's going to fire up. There's no inside help. And James Jones works back out to the outside and then runs that over route to precision. That was pretty. And the kick goes way to the back of the end zone where Porter downs it. And the Rams on offense will take over from the 20-yard line. Aaron Rodgers, six out of eight, 95 yards and a touchdown. He's already hit five different receivers. What looked like a slow start for the Packers. They're up 10 nothing here. And did you see who James Jones gave that football to? Right here, old leather helmet, old leatherhead. <laughs> He's got the got the football that He's, James Jones just caught for the the touchdown. He's, now I get the brown helmets for the Packers. He's staying in the retro theme. Yeah, to simulate those old leatherheads. Steven Jackson is back in against the pitch. It's up here at the 30-yard line. Frank Zombo in, sharing time with Eric Walden back up to the injured scapula. After a nine-yard gain, it'll be second and one. That's a broken shoulder blade in my mind. The old scapula. <laughs> well, he's he's healed according to his coaches. Easy, easy. Let's go, Badger. Badger. Breeze has picked up a little bit down there. Carries for the first down. Already 30 yards plus rushing for Stephen Jackson, who sat out a series when Cadillac Williams was in. Rams have moved the ball, but failed on a fourth down and missed the 47-yard field goal. Yeah, their their problems again have been self-inflicted. The the missed field goal is just feathered out to the right. The penalties and then the big drop by Denario Alexander down the middle of the field. Steven Jackson across the 35 yard line a penalty play. Offside defense number 52. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. So the call on Clay Matthews. Uh, he's just anticipating the snap count. He, he anticipates wrong here as he comes in early. Watch him come flying inside. And he does a lot of that. You know, you typically think of outside linebackers in the 3-4 defense, three down linemen, four outside linebackers as edge rushers. He does a lot of that, but I promise you, Chris, he is stunting down inside as much as he's rushing the edge. From the 37. Bradford, quick pass caught by Denario Alexander. He holds on this time for a first down up near the 47 and a half yard line. He looks bigger than 6'5 when he starts moving. And that's a matchup they want to hit today. Sam Bradford told us yesterday they really think they can get something going on those inside linebackers in coverage against the Packer defense. After a gain of 11, the no huddle. Bradford's throw complete again down near the 42, Alexander. Let's get a game break. Here's Kurt Benefit. Well, San Francisco trying to get back in it, down 10 nothing to the Lions. Frank Gore doing his best to help. 47 yards on the run, but he gets stopped by Chris Houston at the one-yard line. And right now, they're knocking on the door down 10-0. Chris, 10. Thanks, Kurt. And the Rams may be knocking on the door for the first set of downs. Go, go, go. Pressure, it's picked up. Bradford throws. And 
Brandon Gibson catches it with maybe a yard or two gain as A.J. Hawk was there. Here's the one thing I love, and they don't have anything to show for it, the Rams, zero points, but I love the fact they're getting the ball out quick. Shotgun, fast pass. Sam Bradford has been hammered, sacked 18 times this season. And today they've been able to get the ball out on time, and he has not received one of those patented big Packer hits. Line, line, line. So three tight ends in on second and ten. There was no gain on that completion. Bradford. And Trevor already goes down. There it is. And A.J. Hawk was in like a hawk. The beauty of having guys like Clay Matthews out on the edge is you can end up, protections end up going this way, and you can end up sending your inside players. You see all the offensive line turn to the outside, and A.J. Hawk just pretends like he is going to cover the running back, and then as he sees the running back release in front of him, he dips around him and goes and gets himself a huge sack. Greg Salas. It'll be fourth down. Green Bay's 13th sack of the season puts the Rams in a hole they can't dig out of. And so Donnie Jones will come out and attempt to punt for the Rams who trail 10 0. Back to return for the pack is rookie Randall Cobb. He's already won a kickoff back this year. Excellent punt inside the 10, and it's down on the fly by Quinn Porter. James Jones, touchdown catch, adds to the field goal, and it's 10 0 Packer. Packer fans remember him well. Al Harris is seven years as a member of the Green Bay Packers. He'll be 37 years old in December. He's gone to the Pro Bowl a couple of times, has been involved in postseason games, but Helping the Rams shore up the secondary. A first down, Rodgers, oh, he's open. Inside the 40, Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson. Touchdown, Packers. 93 yards. They must have figured we were featuring Al Harris there because this is a double move that Al bites on. Jordy's going to sell it inside. You're going to see the big pump fake. Oh, he didn't even sell it that hard. It was the big pump fake from Aaron Rodgers. Al Harris had his eyes in the backfield. And that's too easy from Aaron Rodgers to Jordy Nelson. And for Nelson, his third touchdown this season of 50 yards or more. Surprised he has the energy to leap after going 93 yards. And the extra point by Mason Crosby makes it 17 0. It was not a great route in terms of the double move. Again, what sold it was that deliberate, deliberate pump fake from Aaron Rodgers. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet and their award winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Packers open up a 17-0 lead, a career-long touchdown throw for Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson, 93 yards versus the former Packer on the corner, Al Harris. Quinn Porter back to receive, and this time he bobbles and runs it out. And stops short of the 20-yard line. Talk about Packer teams previously that have started out 5-0. And gone on to great success, 29 through 31. Don Hudson was on that 44 team. The head coach was Curly Lambeau at 62. Jim Taylor led the NFL in rushing yards. And, of course, Vince Lombardi and Bart Starr, part of that team in 1965. And this Packer team. <laughs> I see Lombardi. What the heck's going on around here? Well, he's happy. I think he likes what he sees out of the pack as Jackson carries. 
of this Packer team, they're not even talking about repeating. In fact, it was Aaron Rodgers who said, boy, the expectations have changed around here. Yeah, and he said they, they've won some ugly games, which is unacceptable. Because, as a matter of fact, we grade ourselves, and we feel like we've lost a couple uh, with their 5-0 and start. I'll tell you that in, in Steve Spagnuolo, that last touchdown was one of the first times we saw him set pressure in this game. He sends a second-level blitzer off the edge, and they got bit with the double move. It's a handoff to Brandon Dixon coming around, and he stopped it. Great at the 30-yard line and first down marker. Let's see where they spot it. And all of a sudden, it is a first down for the Rams. They need points. Try and hang in with the defending champs. Three tight ends come in with Denario Alexander, the receiver, out to the right. And Steven Jackson, the running back. Jackson carries. It's eighth carry of the day, and that'll put him just over 40 yards. The Rams talked about going back to fundamentals. Talked about win one play at a time. They started out that way, but well, they need to stay that way. But the thing away. is, is they got to get a good long drive here. They got to get some points. Otherwise, Steven Jackson's impact could easily become obsolete in this game. The score gets too left-handed. Oh no! We did to get to the 40 for a first down and second down. The pass, incomplete, intended for Gibson, who really was covered quite well by Tremont Williams. It'll be third down. Passing game is just not synced up when you watch the Rams. E even with two weeks off and the bye week, I mean, you can just see it. The receivers and the quarterback press just aren't on the same page. And when they are, the receivers can't make a play for the QB. Pass is complete to Salas, but at the 35, Woodson knocks him down, and it'll be fourth down for the Rams. Inside of seven minutes here to go in the first half. And Aaron Rodgers, a couple of touchdown tosses. Mason Crosby field goal have it 17 nothing as Jones is ready to punt. Randall Cobb standing back at his 20. Goes out of bounds. He'll be marked up at the 33 yard line. That's where Aaron Rodgers of the pack will take over. Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, and Lambeau Field. First down, Ryan Grant carries. And is hit hard. As the Rams trail 17-0 here. And for Aaron Rodgers, 16 touchdown passes leads the NFL. He came in tied with Tom Brady at 14. Brady and the Patriots face the Cowboys later. Rogers incomplete. And a penalty flag comes in as Jennings was trying to make the catch. And I I think Justin Bannon saying he tipped that ball. Justin Bannon yelling at the referee saying, I got a finger on that ball. And, and if he did, then it see him right there, 95. Takes away a defensive hold or pass interference to the secondary. Illegal contact, defense number 21. Whether the ball was tipped does not matter on an illegal contact penalty. That foul happens before the pass is thrown. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. And Steve Spagnuolo saying he hit it, he hit it. But as you hear at Hockey Lee, if the penalty occurred before the ball was tipped, it's very simply just an illegal you contact. You can't challenge that. There's the matchup right there. See if there's illegal contact past five yards. There it is. That was the call before the before ball the came ball. out. All right. 
So first and ten. Rodgers. Rogers. Complete. Stops short. Greg Jennings will be 45 yard line. Al Harris over there. And a no huddle for the pack after a seven yard gain. 55. to throw on the run, but he'll keep it this time. And still they've got the first down. That's where Aaron Rodgers is extremely underrated as an athlete, because there's good coverage down the field. And he's just back there buying time, buying time. There's nobody open in the middle of that zone. So Laurinaitis there looking for work. Here's Al Harris up at the top. James Jones. Like he was open there for a second. Well, he ran for the first down. You Whoa. see the breeze picking up down there. First and ten. Rogers spins out of that somehow and completes the pass for a first down to Ryan Grant. That guy is Houdini in the pocket, the magic man. Look at him as he moves around in here. This is what I'm talking about, the underrated athleticism. Should have been sacked right there by Gibson. Then he goes down to one knee, pops back up, always keeping his eyes down the field, and finds Ryan Grant for a first down. Man, that's impressive. 15-yard pick up against the line without a hole. Oh, Ryan Grant. Right and we've already seen him today and what he does out of the pocket, the long touchdown to James Jones and how he extends plays with those legs. Look at that number outside of the throwing pocket. A 141 rating. Some of those guys yeah, is those best by far. It's by, yeah. ne by necessity, but some of that's by design with Rodgers because he is so good. Out of the pocket. Rogers completes. He is just carving up with a scrim. What's new? You know, he's one of those guys, Aaron Rodgers. He's just a superstar. That's it. I mean, he is going to show up every game with star power and put up big numbers. He just seems like every week this guy, this cat's going to throw for three yards and slice you up, like you said. Jennings has three catches, six different receivers. Blue 58. Blue 15. James starts. Down the Wait, that's a pretty good job by Darian Stewart, who's starting out there at safety. Because Josh Sitton, that big, massive offensive guard, comes off unblocked. Gets right in his face. Shocks him a little bit, but Darian Stewart's able to play off of that play, the block by the big guard, and still get in on the tackle for... Green, I take the game. runner! Watch the replace! Hey! Hey, with the smart goal, Watch right this here. matchup somebody, right there. Somebody will watch the reverse. Right, 319! 319! Rogers. There it is. For the end zone and a little bit long for Jennings. And Justin King was back there. It'll be third down. In the red zone, as good as Aaron Rodgers is everywhere else, and he's had some long throws today for scores. Look at that record. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown to interception ratio. That's incredible. It's incredible. incredible. And really, that's why they're world champions. Lucy. If there's no, the, the turnover is the biggest stat in pro football. The red zone is right behind it in terms of level of importance, and he's the best. On third down. He has time. Now, he can run. And he slides for a first down. So, and then there you see how quick he just makes it look easy. His awareness 
in the pocket or out of the pocket. And I asked him that on, on Friday. I said, how do you, it's the hardest job in pro sport. You make it look easy. He said, it's not. He certainly makes it look that way. He works hard at it, but he has fun. First and goal from the seven at the two-minute mark. Today's game is sponsored by Pizza Hut, where we're big fans of delicious pizza deals only at your Pizza Hut. Rams desperate for a stop. Six defensive backs in. Packers have first and goal from the seven. Rodgers, end zone low and incomplete. And you know why we just showed that graphic of Aaron Rodgers 63 touchdowns one interception in the red zone a big part of that is Where he locates the ball as he throws it I mean, That ball was diving low on him and maybe a little bit too low But he's only gonna put it where his receiver can get it period and we were talking to him on Friday and, and He loves to be aggressive down here in the red zone He'd love to throw every down into the end zone if he could and out second out he's got four wide receivers there Zone. But watch as Aaron Rodgers extends the play with his legs. He'll threaten these two white jerseys. Watch them both break on Aaron Rodgers, thinking he was going to run. He sees them pull up and come his way. And again, off the run, laser precision. Aaron Rodgers already has over 230 yards passing and three touchdowns. We haven't got through the first half. He's not good, Chris. He's great. And for all the talk about Donald Driver, he's fine with his role, his second touchdown of the year. Greg Jennings commenting on his quarterback. He is great. Like, it, it, it's scary how young he is, how good he is at such a young age, but he continues to climb the ladder. He continues to raise the bar and raise the level of play, not only for himself, but of those around him. And Greg Jennings was here when Brett Favre was the quarterback as well, but his comments on Aaron Rodgers echo what you said. Well, and like Favre, Aaron Rodgers has taken complete ownership of this offense. They'll send a play, and he'll change it in the huddle if he doesn't like the look that he's getting or maybe who's running a certain route. It's really, really awesome to watch. Quinn Porter back keeps him busy. He's going to play it out. Again, stops just short of the 20. 145 to go in the first half. They got out of the gate slow, but the Packers now with a 24 to nothing lead. Coming up, the Visa halftime report. All the highlights and scores from around the league, including Buffalo and the Giants. The Bills a surprise team. The Steelers back on a roll here. And highlights from the 49ers. And the Lions game, the only other undefeated team other than the Pack, Detroit. They don't play each other until Thanksgiving on Fox. Bradford had time, but didn't get rid of it, and he goes down. And here comes the pressure from Don Capers. Sam Bradford's the most blitz quarterback in, in, in the whole pro game. Now clearly up 24-0. A lot of teams would sit back and play shelf coverage and keep it all in front of them. Don Capers will have none of it. There's Dom right there. He is going to send the pressure and send it a lot throughout the rest of this game. Charles Woodson got that. Second sack of the game for the Packers. Second and 16. And Steven Jackson carries that to the 20-yard line. He'll bring a third down. Clock has stopped at one minute and one second, and the Packers take a timeout. We mentioned the Visa halftime. Let's check in with Kirk Benefit. 
Okay, coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, we'll have scores and highlights from around the league, including the Giants hosting the suddenly impressive Buffalo Bills, Jacksonville visiting Pittsburgh, and these guys will finish their beverages and have lots of comments for you, plus fantasy stats. It all comes your way on the Visa Halftime Report. We'll see you then. Thanks, Kirk and Gallows on third and ten here. Rams hope to maybe get something before the half. No pressure or additional pressure. And Brandon Gibson has it for a first down across the 40. He came in as the Rams' leading receiver. And after a 21 yard game, Rams have two timeouts remaining. Extra pressure is picked up. Bradford's throw is incomplete. And a hurry it. AJ Hawk was in on it. And they're so much better when they're sending the pressure. The, the play before this one, where they had the big completion over the middle, they rushed three and dropped eight into coverage. And they do that a lot, the, the Green Bay Packers. Man, they are just, they look much better when they're blitzing. There's Morgan Burnett. We mentioned the broken right hand. He has a cast on that hand. In college, he broke his wrist and thought, but he said, this is going to get, takes him getting used to Comes the pressure again. That's his complete. That's Salas. He's going to run for a first down and get out of bounds. Packers a little thin depth wise at safety. Nick Collins, remember, went on injured reserve. MD Jennings, the backup, but they often can slide Charles Woodson into the safety spot. Oh, yeah. They're deep at corner with Sam Shields and Jared Bush. Pressure picked up, passes, throw away and incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Bradford 12 out of 20 so far. 142 yards. No interceptions. I'll tell you what this team needs is they need to go hit the, the, the trade market and go get themselves a receiver. But what about Brandon Lloyd? I would do it, and there is no doubt in my mind I would go give a pick. Whether it be a fourth or a fifth round pick, and he could control the whole thing because of his contract, but I'd definitely be offering something to Denver and get Brandon Lloyd reunited with Josh McDaniels. Trade deadline Tuesday in the NFL. Bradford completes to Gibson, who looks inside the 30. Bradford took a hit, slow getting up. Rams have two timeouts remaining, and they're going to burn one right now after a 14-yard game. Watch Clay Matthews come around the corner. A.J. Hawk's going to come up inside. Now here comes Matthews wrapping around that corner. That is wicked in terms of his pad level and how fast he gets to the quarterback and then delivers a big-time shot. So... Assuming he's all right, fresh set of downs, and it looks like he is. Let's go back to that receiver, because what about Mark Clayton? He was injured for the Rams. Yeah, he's going to come off the, the physically unable to perform list next week. And he had a knee that basically exploded on him last year. He will be a big asset to get him back into the receiver core. And again, I, I wouldn't sleep until I got Brandon Lloyd on this football team via trade. Ball's tipped and incomplete. And Hawk, who's had a busy first half, got his hands on that one. Remember I talked about Clay Matthews coming up inside. Watch him wreck this up on the inside as he runs into the center and just pinballs these guys. Watch Jason Brown right there. Right to his back. Clay Matthews, everyone will say you only have one sack, Clay. And where's the numbers? He may be playing his best football. And Kevin Green's been a huge part of that as coach. There's Kevin right there. 12 seconds left. They have one timeout. They're in field goal range, so they want to be careful with the clock here. Uh oh. Quick pass. Steve Jackson with a one handed catch. And he got out of bounds. What a grab by Jackson. What a throw from Sam Bradford, knowing he's got an unblocked defender, and it's Clay Matthews. No one picks up Clay. Here he comes. Bradford knows it. I got to get this ball out of my hand before I get hit. Puts a nice. Nice ball to Steven Jackson for the big first down. That's good stuff by Sam Bradford. And they're not going to fool around. Josh Brown comes in. He missed a 47-yard field goal the other way. Give away. He's going to try from 36 to get the Rams on the board. The kick, and this time, 
is good. Clay Matthews, he leads the NFL in quarterback hits and pressures, but everybody looks at the sacks and says, oh, he only has one. Yeah, and he's so much more than that, his impact. And, and look at outside linebacker pressure when you talk about sacks, knockdowns, and, and hurries. And that's, again, with only having one sack coming into today. And all those other guys are elite players. Plays right there with him. And he's so good at, at not just, as I said, rushing the edge, but flying down inside and, and either wrecking it where Charles Woodson can clean it up behind him or they'll send A.J. Hawk they'll send other guys in there to wreck it and he'll be back in coverage and he'll be the cleanup guy his versatility is ridiculously good and his mom and dad are here watching his dad we hope a future Hall of Famer certainly deserves to be in there said he hears from his brother every once in a while to critique his moves he, he said he didn't listen to his dad when he was younger well they never now, do now he, well, he calls he wants advice yeah Says after every game, he's he's phoning up Clay Senior and saying, "What'd I do? What'd you see? What can I do better?" He's even going to other coach saying, "Well, my dad said we need to do this." <laughs> Boy, things are how things change from 16 to, to 24, 25 years old. It's amazing how much smarter your parents become. And this is Weber to run out the clock here in the first half. This Tom Crabtree is on it, and Aaron Rodgers with three. Touchdown passes and 234 yards passing. And a defense led by Clay Matthews and A.J. Hawk as the defending champs and undefeated Packers in control of the winless Rams. There's the guy right there. We, listen, they did a good job weathering the storm early, that being the Rams defense. Then they decided they wanted to send some pressure. They dialed up that patented Spagnolo blitz package one time, and the one time they got bit on that double move from Aaron Rodgers to Jordy Nelson for the long touchdown. You know, Mike McCarthy reminded his Packer team in these throwback jerseys that a couple of years ago, and Tim, you worked that game. Green Bay was was a successful team. They went into Tampa Bay, the winless Bucks, and lost that game. A few of the players mentioned that. Remember that that we can't sleepwalk through the schedule. Yeah, that quarterback quit sleepwalking a long time ago. Visa Halftime coming up with all the scores and highlights. The pack leads 24-3 at the break. Before we start the second half, Aaron Rodgers spectacular in the first half. Three touchdown passes. In a variety of ways and some good examples there. You saw first little play action. Ball comes out on time right there, extending the play with his legs. Here he steps into one strong arm on the out route. And then this one took about five seconds. Uh, to get that route developed and Aaron Rodgers outside of the pocket. He's just so darn good. He, he was almost flawless after a little bit of a slow start. He really got cooking. Super Bowl champs undefeated team didn't play down to the competition. That's a concern sometimes in these games. Well I think if you look at last year you look at Washington Miami and Detroit. They have been known to play down to the competition. They scored in four or five drives in that first half. And you can follow your favorite NFL team all season long. Go to iTunes.com forward slash NFL. See the ball needs to be held for the kicker because of the breeze out on the field. So Josh Gordy holding for Josh Brown. And the second half is on the way. Here's Randall Cobb. There's a penalty flag, and he goes down at the 12 yard line. It's three of them thrown from different directions. Packers only had one penalty in the first half. Four for the Rams, and they were costly. There were two holding fouls by the receiving team during the return. Number two, 82 and 43. The penalties are enforced from the dead ball spot. First down. That'll back up the Packers. Let's check in with Jamie Maggio down on the field. Jamie. All right, Chris, thank you. Coming out of the half, Mike McCarthy said he's happy with what his team is doing on the field. They've been good on third down. However, they're giving up too much production on normal down and distance. As for Steve Spagnolo, he said, I like what we're doing offensively. We need to finish with touchdowns. Spags thoughts on the Packers offense. He said, hey, they've had a couple of big plays. One of those was a bad call by me. I got too aggressive with the blitz. That resulted in the Jordy Nelson touchdown. Thanks, Jamie. As James starts, carries on first down and may have another. 
first down. And now you have to wonder if you're if you're Steve Spagnuolo, if you're a Rams fan, what what the head coach does now because you're down 21 points. Do you take chances and start setting some of that pressure? Do you send that extra defender up into the box? Because I promise you the Packers are going to run the football a lot here in the second half of this game. No huddle. Rodgers pass complete right at the 25. And Donald Driver moves it upfield. Rodgers with a 35-yard touchdown pass to James Jones. A 93-yard to Jordy Nelson. That was the blitz and the seven-yard touchdown pass to Donald Driver. And we talk about his accuracy, which allows those guys to be so good at getting yards out after the catch, 176 yards after the catch for the Packer wide receiver group. On first down, Rodgers keeps firing. Jennings with the reception. And Greg Jennings with the first down. A 15-yard pickup. They're going to mark it right inside the 44 at Green Bay. Coming out like this is a yeah, tie game. Clearly Mike McCarthy wants to put these guys to sleep in terms of that Rams defense and stomp them right out of this game here in the third quarter. So Roger, Roger. See what Roger. Does against this illusion of pressure. Picked up. Passes almost. Caught by Jennings, but Stewart, Derek Stewart was right back there from the safety spot. We talk about the no huddle, and everyone thinks the no huddle is a hurry up. The no huddle is not a hurry up. It depends on how fast the quarterback wants to run it in terms of controlling the tempo. You see Chris Long, he's, got his yes, little he's ready to go. Point stands for about 35 seconds waiting to go. Three nineteen. James starts. Met right away by Chris Chamberlain. Checking the stats after the first half. Dominated, obviously, by Green Bay in the score. But the first few moments, the Rams moved the football. Yeah, they did. They, they certainly did. Been able to run it a little bit. You see the yards after the catch, that being a big one. But that's all Aaron Rodgers in the passing game. Hold on. So that's stoppable. Hold after on. no game, it's third and ten. Got some pressure. Rodgers fires incomplete. Jermichael Finley, a tough one-handed effort. We had a defensive lineman covering him in Eugene Sims. And Eugene Sims, he was a he was a safety, believe it or not, early in college. Now a defensive lineman, and they like him quite a bit. And the Rams will put four defensive ends out there in the nickel package to rush the pass. Only the second Green Bay punt of the game as it sails out of bounds is Tim Maskell, who plays the field position game. The Rams will have the football, but the Packers look like they have things in hand. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By End Time, October 28th, only in theaters. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Ram defense take it to the woodshed so far. Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, the Packers with a 24 3 advantage, and Steven Jackson on the pitch. Fighting hard to get across the 30 yard line. Steven Jackson said, You know, I want to be the emotional leader here. I, 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 you know, be the hammer, help this team get going in the right direction. And the offense, other than producing points, his first few drives moved it well. But the defense couldn't keep Rodgers out of the end zone. Yeah, move it all you want. Get yourself some points. This is it's the worst team in the NFL in terms of scoring points about 11 and a half a game. And now it's going to be third down. The Packers shut them off. So they're going to need about two. Rams come out with back-to-back -back runs on their first possession. Of what did you learn? 51? 51. Five, five, five. Complete. Greg Salas 
his sixth catch of the game as he gets into Packer territory. A fourth round draft pick from Hawaii with a 18 yard game. He's just going to go right inside Sam Shields on that play. That guy got prolific numbers at Hawaii, Salas. First down pass is dropped by Salas. He's not a lot of those. I, I tell you, those Hawaii receivers, it makes me think of Devon Best down in, in Miami. Those guys catch about a million balls every day at practice, University of Hawaii. And they usually typically come into the NFL as, as guys that are outstanding catchers of the football. Looks like there maybe Zombo got in his line of sight. He lost the ball in the air. Jackson carries here. Alex Green, the Green Bay running back from Hawaii. Who was inactive today was a teammate, obviously, of Greg Salas uh, last year in college. And the Packers defense will have another third down against this Ram offense. Rams will need six. Watch Desmond Bishop right here. He slams Denario Alexander, and now Harvey Dahl, of course, goes in there to help clean it up, and then Denario is going to finish it up. Desmond Bishop started that one. Bradford. Jackson short of the first down. Desmond Bishop wouldn't let him go. And on fourth down, the punting unit comes out for the Rams. There's just no punch in this passing game. I mean, that's what it feels like to me. Even if Sam's delivering the ball on target, guys' ability to really run after the catch and be playmakers, I just don't see it. A high straight up boot. Down inside the 15 yard line. The Packers wearing those old throwback jerseys in front of the home folks will be on offense. The Packers back home after a big Sunday night win. They trailed against Atlanta, rallied to win that game, and they've been in control from the start against the Lucas Rams. They can't stop this offense, the Rams, D. They have got to get a turnover here. So, Ryan Brand is up. That is not down. And there goes the whistle. Sharing the load with James Starks. And remember a couple of weeks ago, the last game for, for St. Louis, that game was so one-sided. It was so ugly for the Rams on both sides of the ball. But their defense gave them a huge spark, Chris, in the second half of that game. A couple of uh, interceptions, a couple of turnovers, the big interception by James Laurinaitis. They got right back in it and had an opportunity in that game. Down 21 here. They got to start counting on that defense to make a play and get the ball back for the offense. It's just that Aaron Rodgers doesn't make any mistakes. We need to force the Bears with some pressure. Rodgers sets up and scrambles is knocked down hard across the 15 yard line. Had plenty of time, but couldn't find anybody open. Former Packer Brady Papinga and Robert Quinn off the defensive line. Eventually got to Rodgers, so it's third and eight. And this is the fine line of Aaron Rodgers. Is a lot of quarterbacks get out of the pocket, especially with a 21 point lead. They're just going to throw it away. He wants to strike you dead with a deep vertical route, and there was nobody open, as you saw on one side of the field. And then two over one, two defenders over one receiver on the wide side of the field. Jennings, first down. All the way out to the 40 yard line. He is such a great route runner. That's where Greg Jennings is underrated as a route runner. Because Justin King forced an outside release on him, but he was able to bend it right back inside, get down the seam, down the hash mark. And then, of course, the precision and, and the timing and the accuracy from Aaron Rodgers with a perfect throw. Five catches in the game for Greg Jennings. That was worth 24 yards, so from the 40. Five seven. The Packer machine hey, hey, hey. keeps rolling. 319. 319. Shut that fuck shit. It's complete. Ball's out. across the 45. Oh, 
here's the play before that I was talking about with Greg Jennings. He's going to run around Justin King, get back to the middle of the field, and then watch this accuracy. Look at the timing and accuracy and perfection on that timing route. Doesn't get any better than that. And with all due respect, Tom Brady is great and maybe the best ever. This guy right here is playing as good a football as Tom. And maybe the best in the business collectively right now when you look at Aaron Rodgers. Kill, 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 Brian Brandt carries. You saw on the NFL on Fox pregame show it opened with Joe Montana talking about the journey. And for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, the journey through last year and now the idea of repeating, which they don't even bring up. They, they don't even act like they won the Super Bowl. I mean, we saw Mike McCarthy didn't wear didn't have his ring on. No, they're going to prepare the same way. They are grinders, they're workers, and they're going to follow the blueprint that got them there last year. And Chris, you know this. You've been around long enough. Every year plays its own tune. They're off to a great start, and they're building. And as Aaron Rodgers told us, we're a work in progress. Wilson. On third and two, they're progressing quite a bit. <laughs> they're, they're, work, they're working in progression. <laughs> yeah, the, the Rams want to work in progress like that. All right, timeout Packers. They have the ball, they have the lead. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL from your Verizon phone to get NFL Mobile. Join Fox Sports in the Octagon in November. It's an epic heavyweight title. Junior Dos Santos and Kane Velasquez for the UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World Live. Saturday, November 12th only on Fox. On third and two, four wide receivers for Rodgers. The quick throw and easily. Oh! Jordy Nelson dropped him. He was open for the first down. Gordy gave him about a 15 yard cushion. That's what's a, a great example of off and soft in terms of the coverage. And you showed that to Aaron Rodgers. He's going to try to distribute it to the right guy. Nelson just dropped it. Josh Gordy, the one time Packer over there covering. Yeah, he's been here three weeks for the St. Louis round. Austin Pettis waving for the fair catch. Let's it go, and it dives into the end zone. 52-yard punt with no return for Tim Maste. The Rams trail by 21, but half the football. Packers enjoying the home game in those jerseys from the 1920s. And for Sam Bradford, the frustration continues. Salas. He holds on. Greg Salas with Tremont Williams back there. He has more catches in this game than any other receiver. That's his seventh grab. After a gain of 19, the Rams move up to the line. Steven Jackson. The Packers unsettled on defense. He gets out across the 45. Yeah, and they're going to get into this version of the no huddle, but the no, no huddle hurry up. And I'll tell you what it does is it really gets the pass rushers tired for the Green Bay Packers. Now, it's hard on your receivers, certainly, when you're doing the hurry up stuff, but it makes it much easier on your offensive line because it's tired of that pass rush. Jackson, powering hard, stop short of the first down. Greg Salas, you talked about those receivers who come from Hawaii, a fourth round draft pick. One of the reasons Mike Sims Walker was inactive today. On third down, Bradford keeps. It would have to be an interesting spot on that scrum. You'd have to figure. He looks short from if you now that that yellow line isn't official, but from where the spot is right there, it looks like they're going to be short. There wasn't much room for Bradford to move towards. You have to think that Josh McDaniels and the Rams would go for it even if they didn't get the first. Tell already this baby's 
will be short. Just barely by the length of the football. And you got to go for it. You got nothing to lose. Bring in the heavy package, bring in your three tight ends and your two backs and mash it. Well, they had a fourth down and short the last time. They, they went deep down the sideline and failed to connect to Denario Alexander on a Bradford throw. Let's see what they do here. Three tight ends. The fullback, Brick Miller. Steven Jackson gets the first down. Rams and Packer territory. Steve Spagnola looking for a spark from somewhere. And a very good block by Britt Miller, who sees Desmond Bishop flying through the alleyway here. Watch Britt. He's going to come and lead the way. 55, Desmond Bishop. Looks like he's going to have a tackle for loss. And Britt is able to turn back and get just enough of him. Britt Miller to open that lane for Steven Jackson to get the first down. Jackson at the top of the screen as a receiver. Bradford floats it. And did he hang on? Yes. That's Denario Alexander inside the 30 of the Packers. Well, he threw him open because Bishop was in good coverage on Denario Alexander. And that was a laser ball from Sam Bradford. 21-yard gain. Fourth catch of the game for Alexander. They got an isolation route at the top right here if they want to take a shot. Rams best drive since their opening drive. <laughs> Battle at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. He was in the area on Salas. Another impact play for Clay Matthews. There he is, 52 on the edge there. Use a little power rush, and then he does such a great job of playing with his eyes. I mean, he gets locked up onto those big old offensive tackles where there's a major size mismatch. He's not controlled by him physically, and he's like a ricochet rusher. He reads the eyes of the quarterback. As soon as that non-throwing hand came off for Sam Bradford, he knew the ball was coming out. He jumped up and got it backed up. Cadillac Williams is in. Bradford completes. Down there, first down is Williams. Well, mark him a little bit short. So they're going to need a about a yard. And Desmond Bishop's had a nice year, 55, the inside linebacker there for the Green Bay Packers. He, he got in here last year and replaced Nick Barnett, who's now in Buffalo. And he hasn't looked back. He's really turned into a fine player. Steven Jackson. First down Rams, down to the 10. That's what he said his favorite. He loves the inside running. Yeah, the offensive line likes blocking for the inside run game, too, because they put a couple of those defensive linemen in the washing machine. 81 yards Washington. rushing for Jackson, and it's first and goal for the Rams. Washed him down the line of scrimmage. Silver. Exactly what Sam Bradford wanted. He got the matchup out on the perimeter on Sam Shields. One on one isolation route. 6 5 versus 5 11. Run the fade. Ball location. Awful. That ball's got to be high to the back of the pylon to give your 6 5 receiver a chance to go up and get it. Sam Shields got between the intended receiver and Sam Bradford. That's only the second interception Bradford's thrown this year. Rogers on first down gets to James Starks for the Packer defense. That's 11 interceptions. That's second in the league to Buffalo. The Bills came in as the league leaders with a dozen prior to their game with the Giants. The Bills trailing the Giants at the moment, but the Green Bay defense rising to the occasion. Yeah, what's new? I, I think you, and look, they've been uneven this year. They've been 30th in pass defense, and they've given up a lot of big plays, five explosive plays per game. Those are plays over 20-plus. They're coming off that performance down in, in Atlanta. 
Right now, it was their best half of football, and they have built off of that here today. Rodgers. Here he goes again. He's going to run and slide. He has a first down. Just over a minute remaining here in the third quarter. Packers came in, the number one scoring offense, averaging just under 35 points a game. Here's the problem, and, and you're really caught in between a rock and a hard place if you're Steve Spagnolo, because you can't blitz because you're going to get killed in the secondary with the with the man beaters and the man routes. You're trying to play coverage. You're trying to keep it all in front of you, but they're running off deep routes, big clear out routes, and if you don't get the pressure with guys like Chris Long in your front four, it's just too easy for Aaron Rodgers to buy time or extend plays with his legs or just run. James Starks runs here. Let's get a game break. Check in with Kirk Benham. Well, you're talking about easy. It makes Eli Manning making it look easy here against Buffalo all kinds of time. Hooked up with Mario Manningham down inside the one. Ahmad Bradshaw took it in from there. His third touchdown of the day. Giants lead at 24-17 in the third. Chris and Tim. Redskins are trailing the Eagles in that NFC East race. Philly's been in a must-win must situation since, like, week two. And uh, your dream team is right here. They play at Lambeau no, no, no. Field on a regular basis. 319. And second down, a penalty flag flies. Hey, the Lions are out in front. Call is on the Packers. And they got Randall Cobb in the slot for a false start is what it was. So the other unbeaten other than the pack Detroit in the same division and they have a 13 12 advantage over the 49ers. And Sam Shields got hit hard after that interception. And the third quarter winds down. That is the end of three the Packers 24 the Rams three Fox NFL Sunday will continue after a word from your local Fox station. Sam Shields after the interception a tough hit in the end zone Brandon Gibson tackling him headed to the locker room as we begin the fourth quarter Green Bay an opening field goal they've never trailed three touchdown passes for Aaron Rodgers on second down and that's almost intercepted incomplete three Rams around Greg Jennings. I think that was DJ Williams Chris out in the route the tight end who they drafted from Arkansas who really brings some of the Jermichael Finley skill sets to the table there he is number 84 not quite as tall not quite as athletic but I think a guy they got pretty high hopes for in this spread passing attack Jermichael Finley Tom Crabtree Andrew Corbus at the tight end position inactive today also Ryan Taylor who helps on special teams on third down about up 21 and just rolling out the empty there goes Rogers floating it and incomplete there wasn't a whole lot there for Jermichael Finley well if the Ram offense could put some points up the defense has at least slowed down this Green I, Bay offense. I think Jermichael Finley got away with some offensive pass interference there, jacking Quentin Michael from behind as that ball was coming at Michael and he was trying to make a play on. Tim Maste and the punt. Oh, he just got it off. There was good pressure and a booming kick. Sends Pettis back inside the five. Uh oh. And he slips out of bounds. Snap was a little bit high, but Mastay got it away. It was close. 67 yard boot. Rams trail 24 3 of the fourth. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. By Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. And by the new 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Big sports weekend in Wisconsin. Brewers, the NLCS, the Badgers keep rolling undefeated. Matt Kenseth won the NASCAR race, Wisconsin native, and the Packers lead the Rams. Passes complete and run out of bounds. Lance Kendricks, who is from Wisconsin, 
and a couple of big catches in the first half. Clearly when you look at Bradford's numbers their adjustment in the bye week was get the ball out of his hands and get it out fast. And that's been the difference They're just stuff like that just catch and throw for Sam Bradford today. Cadillac Williams there. Bradford said he was excited his first visit to Lambeau Field. He said it's a one stadium you hear about growing up as a kid with the tradition of the success of the franchise. It's not just all the great players that have played here but all the great games. Think of the great games that have been played in this stadium. On first down. For Denario Alexander. Yeah, did he hang out in bounds? Yes. Nice bit of footwork over there by the big guy. Very nice, and they're taking advantage of Sam Shields being out. That's Jared Bush out there playing right corner. For Sam Shields, as Dom Caper said, Jared Bush kind of the jack of all trades. And Bradford's looking left on that one on one matchup the whole way. And a quick snap and incomplete from uh, that was towards Cadillac Williams. Remember the, gi the Giant game and Ram fans well on Monday night when he didn't react to a, what was a lateral and the Giants ran it in for a touchdown. Second down. And that's the, that's the same play. And Just they to did. the other side. They lost yardage on that because it went out of bounds, but he reacted a little bit late. A 16 yard loss. So it's second down after that 32 yard gainer to Alexander. Sam Shields will not return. Penalty flag right at the snap. False start offense number 76 five yard penalty at second down. For the Rams the hole gets deeper. It's Steve Loney the offensive line coach right there I'll tell you this is loaded with talent up front the St. Louis Rams offensive line but they are young especially at the offensive tackle position. Jason Smith and Roger Saffold. That's Salas. He goes nowhere. It'll be third down. It's the little things. Denario Alexander, you got to make a block. You're running a quick hitch with a little screen, a little hitch screen. Denario Alexander's out there on the corner. Try to block somebody and give your guy a chance. Jarius win for the Packers, the injured player. Back at Lambeau Field, Jarius Wynn, a blow to the head over at the Packers sideline on third down. Hey, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's complete. Kendricks at the 40, it'll be fourth down. Randall come back to receive the punt from Donnie Jones. The Rams got a 32 yard gain with Denario Alexander, but then had a lateral and a penalty. Now they're punting. And that lateral killed him. The minus yards on that lateral was brutal. Fair catch right at the 11. And Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take over on offense. Today's game is sponsored by New Dr. Pepper 10. 10 calories, 23 flavors. It's not for women. Packers have the football protecting a 21 point lead. Three tight ends in for Rodgers on first and 10. Throws complete to Jordy Nelson. He gets a first down. You can get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL now. An 11 yard pickup. 
Nelson had the 93 yard touchdown catch. Caught the Rams in a blitz, really turned the game upside down. That's the career long for Rodgers. No question, Chris. They have not been the same defensively. Now, much better here in the third quarter, but that was certainly the turning point in this game. And now in the fourth quarter, under 12 minutes to play, the starts carries. That was really well played by Chris Long there. He, as a defensive end, this is his. All this to the sideline is his. So he's got to fire into Balaga and keep his outside arm free. Look at him shock the offensive tackle. Keeps his leverage right where he wants it. Keeps the outside arm free. Forces it back inside to where all of his help is. That's just about perfect. Four wide receivers on second and nine. Complete the driver. He has a touchdown catch in this game. And, and I, I got to tell you, the offensive tackles here for the Green Bay Packers today, that was a good play there by Chris Long. But overall, they have won the matchup. And there were question marks coming in with Marshall Newhouse out there at left tackle for, for the Chad Clifton, who's been good here for so long. Bulaga's been out the last couple of games. He's back at right tackle. And really, it's those two guys that have been huge in neutralizing that four man rush. And if you don't get there with your four man rush and you're you're playing seven in coverage, Aaron Rodgers is going to window shot and break down your zones if you can't get heat. The tackles have played big. Third down pass incomplete. And so the pack will punt. But for Aaron Rodgers, his 19th career 300 yard game and his fifth 300 yard game of this season as they are on their way. To six at all. Well, it's what I was saying earlier. He is a super star. And you think about the Michael Jordans of the world and all those guys in, in hoops and great players. They just show up every week and they do their thing no matter what. Aaron awesome. Rodgers every time is going to put up 300 plus, it seems like. Austin Pettis. Inside the 40 of Green Bay and no flags. Tim Maxday, the punter, had to run him down. A 46 yard boot. But a 37 yard return for Pettis whose uncle is Gary Pettis first base coach for the Texas Rangers on their way to the World Series former major leaguer. Look at him move. That's a good job by the punter. Try to give him the old dead leg and then turn the heat back on. Matt's they wasn't having it. Thought we'd see more of Austin Pettis in the receiver rotation but Salas has been the guy. Yeah I agree with you on that. I was expecting the same thing. First down, Bradford complete to Denario Alexander. Knocked down at the 30. Packer defense has done a good job keeping the Rams out of the end zone. They've moved it back and forth, up and close, but it was an interception by Shields when the Rams got inside the 10. Of course, a field goal is all the Rams have been able to put up so far. Bradford has played well, Chris. The blemish is, of course, that fade route where he threw the interception in the end zone. Otherwise, been pretty darn accurate with the football today. Steven Jackson has a wall to go through. Ball comes out, but the Rams are on top of it. He got inside the 20, and it was knocked out. And recovered by Huaman Nalanui, the tight end. Huaman and Illinois Mike is what the players call him. Yeah, and Steven Jackson gets rocked by Morgan Burnett right here, 42. Bang, and that ball gets popped out just as Burnett converged on Steven Jackson and hit him. And the line on Mike, as you said, was right there for the recovery. Steven Jackson as a receiver. Bradford for Cadillac Williams. And incomplete. Steven Jackson's carried 17 times for 90 yards. Leading receiver was for the Rams is Salas with eight catches so far. And Sam Bradford missed him because he is wide open on that little rub route oh or that boy. little pick route. Bradford clearly was going to the matchup. Cadillac Williams matched up on A.J. Hawk, who, by the way, was in perfect coverage. Sam will see that on tape, and he'll be sickened by it. It was an easy touchdown. He missed it. Linda, 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 Linda. Knocked down right away. Cadillac Williams and Morgan Burnett cast it all. It was right out. 
And that's just stepping into the trap. Dom Capers dials up a pressure coming off the edge, knowing that there's going to be a free defender coming on the off the edge. Bradford's going to throw it to his check down. Morgan Burnett, Chris, was just waiting for it. Third down. Perfect scheme, better execution. Jason Smith moved the right tackle. Ball start, offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, it's third down. Coaches can't stand penalties. When they're down in the red zone, they're a thousand times worse. Really. Moving yourself further away from the goal line. Sixth penalty for the Rams. It, this is not an excuse, but it, it is noisy down there. And Steven Jackson took a hard hit the last time when that ball came out for the medical staff checking on the Ram running back who has 90 yards rushing in this game. Underneath to Gibson. And it'll be fourth down. Look at all those Packer throwback jerseys around Gibson right when he caught that football. Rush three, drop eight, make him throw the, the underneath, and then just roll up and tackle. Cadillac Williams is slipping off the field. It's fourth and six. Rams are trying to hurry. Cadillac gets off the field. Lance Kendricks, the receiver. The Packers will take over. It wouldn't matter if he caught that. He didn't drive deep enough on his route. He didn't even get past the first down marker. Lance Kendricks. And again, there's Bradford staring it down. Throws a very catchable ball. Another drop by Kendricks. Aaron Rodgers, another 300-yard game. By the way, Sam Bradford, a 300-yard game, third of his career. On first down, the Packers running the football with Ryan Grant. The wind is uh, picking up just a bit. Uh, Tim, how about the total yard? The Packers are on a roll, but yardage-wise, the Rams have put up over 400 total yards. Well, and that's kind of been the story of the Green Bay Packer defense all year, is they have given up a lot of yards. And I said it earlier, they're 30th in pass defense. But listen, I, I don't care what the total yard number says. The biggest stat for a defense is how many points are you giving up? The Rams got a field goal to show for all 400 of those yards. A.J. Hawk, Lee Matthews with terrific games, Bishop as well on second and seven. It's Grant carrying it again. Let's get a game break and check it again with Kurt Benefit. What would you set in the table for you for America's Game of the Week? Tom Brady and the Patriots put their 19-game regular season streak at home on the line. They've won 19 in a row. We'll see if they can keep it up against the Cowboys. America's Game of the Week when you guys are finished. Chris and Tim. Thanks, Kurt. 60 points in that game, you think? Well, That's going to be a great one because both teams can score at a high rate. And I think when you look at New England's defense, they give up big plays and points all over the place. Rodgers for Jennings, and it's intercepted. Craig Dahl got the deflection. Only the third pick of the season for Aaron Rodgers, holding his hips in frustration. Perfect throw, rare drop. Greg Jennings, let's see what happens here. That ball right in his hands. Tipped up, intercepted. Last night, the Texas Rangers, their second straight World Series trip as they clinched the AL pennant, beating the Tigers. So they'll either be in Milwaukee or St. Louis for game one of the World Series. The Rangers trying to get their first ever World Series title. Legends are born in October in game one of the World Series, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on Fox. How good has Cruz been in that series? We have six home runs in that series. A power source. Wow. Four. Yeah. First down, the Rams run it to Steven Jackson, who's back in the game. Cadillac Williams, by the way, was carted off after we saw him limp off. Jackson was rattled a little bit earlier as well. But for Steven, that's his 18th carry of the game. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 
Jackson as a receiver. Splits out again. Top of your screen. He wants to just throw it to Steven Jackson quick. He's got him for an easy five yard game. And there he is for the first down. And Steven gets out of bounds. Just under five minutes to go. No scoring in the second half of this game. sideline for Gibson and it'll be second down for the Rams that's what I'm talking about out of sync Brandon Gibson looked like he throttled it down was expecting a back shoulder throw Sam threw it over the top he tried to step his foot back on the gas and speed back up and just could not get to the football it's a good example of really what's played this passing game in terms of the deep vertical game this season Steven Jackson now at the bottom of your screen as a receiver on second and ten. And Jackson makes the catch. Coming back to the 28-29 yard line where it'll be third down. People forget what an outstanding receiver Steven Jackson was early in his career. And there was one year we had 90 plus receptions out of the backfield for, for Mark Bolger. Dynamic player. Both the run and the passing game. No, no, no. The Jackson incomplete, fourth down. And I was in the atrium before the game, you and I, before we came up here, and I hear fans, Packer fans, excited about their Super Bowl team undefeated. I'm talking about points. How many? What do you think we got? We get 35 today? Oh, yeah, we should put up 30 easy. Well, the Packers have been in control, but it hasn't been easy for the Packer no, offense. They have been certainly yeah. out of sync here in the second half versus what they were able to do in the, in the second quarter of this game where they were electric. And their defense taking a stand on fourth down. And the Rams move. False start. Offense number 77, 76. Five yard penalty. It's fourth down. So fourth and long now becomes fourth and forever because of a self inflicted wound once again. Now at what point are things like that? Well, what do you, what do you, coaching staff responsible? You can work on that. You all can you wrap want. it all you want, and and I know from talking to Steve Spagnuolo, the head coach, that they are almost bulletproof in practice when it comes to all that. It's the pressure of a real game with the youth on this football team that really forces those errors. Pressure picked up. Bradford has to get rid of it, and he goes down. A pile of Packers on top of Sam Bradford and Clay Matthews was part of it. <laughs> Love the little celebration sack dance. Here he comes. Watch the athleticism and again coming inside is that rap guy that I talked about. When he comes in with that pad level and that velocity and ends up getting on an edge of one of those bigger slower offensive linemen they almost have no chance Chris to block it. And Roger Saffold, the injured Ram player, down at the 44 yard line. And Clay Matthews Sr., we talked about the former player himself, proud of what his son is. Great player. Mom as well. Great, great player. Almost two decades, not so. And the Atlanta Falcons. And he did everything. He didn't just run. A lot like Clay Jr. here, because Clay's not just a guy as we've. Chronicle today that just rushes the passer. He drops, he covers, he, you know, he'll wreck stuff, he'll clean stuff up as a secondary guy. And Kevin Green has coached him up in all phases of that game, but that's how his dad was. And, yeah. and, and I know his dad. And what Kevin Green, who is a kind of a psycho linebacker, and that's a compliment, and, and, and he, of course, pass rusher himself, but he did the whole Cobra strike thing, right? He's got his guys. Oh, no, he, he wants to play the physical card for sure, but just finishing up on, on uh, Clay Sr. And a lot like Kevin Green. Look, Kevin Green rushed the passer all the time. If if Clay Matthews Sr. would have done that all the time, I promise you his sack numbers 
would be through the roof. Maybe the best ever. He was a great pass rusher. He just didn't do enough of it. Saffold being helped off the field. And a tough afternoon for the Rams mentally, physically, on the scoreboard, and in the one loss column. But Clay Matthews. Along with his Packer defense. He also forced a big hold early in this game. They get the stop on fourth down, so Packers take over. James starts. Rams bottle up the run. Just at the four minute mark. And Aaron Rodgers, you know, things have calmed down at the second half, but Mike McCarthy, usually the quarterback is the face of the team anyway, but he he made it a point to say we want to put him out there and represent our franchise. Aaron is that kind of guy, not only what he does in the game, but away from the game as well. Yeah, well, turn on the TV in the local market here. You'll see him endorsing <laughs> just about every product. Well, I like that that belt celebration. We haven't seen that today from Aaron Rodgers, have we? No, we haven't. A wrestling fan. It's something that began back when he was running the scout team, trying to fire up his teammates and taught the defense. James starts, carries the third down. Funny, as good as Aaron Rodgers has been, is we say, and we're talking football, and it was all great. As soon as we mentioned the wrestling, how about that big smile he oh, put yeah. on his face? Hulk Hogan, a fan. You know, here's the. Here, he, if you try to describe Aaron Rodgers, he's got the calm of Joe Montana. Agreed. Right. This is our, our way. To, he's got the physical, the athleticism of uh, John Elway. Check. Okay. You agree on that. He's got the accuracy of Brady. Short, deep. Check whatever, twice. Right. Throw it quick. However you need the ball delivered. He's got the arm strength of Marino. And I'm not sure not about quite, that one. Okay, no, right. he does. He and does. He has, the, he has the smarts of a Peyton Manning. In fact, that's what James Laurinaitis said. It's like playing against Peyton Manning when he's on a roll when you go up against Aaron Rodgers. That's our. That's how we might describe. We're going to take a feeble attempt at all the things that Aaron Rodgers does, and we've seen a lot of that on display today. Well, and he's like an offensive coordinator or a play caller, like Mike McCarthy, his offensive coach there, and the head coach is. These these guys see a look from the sideline or from the booth. They know right away where the mismatch is. A lot of times quarterbacks don't see it. They don't exploit it. Uh, the good ones, the Peyton Mannings, the Tom Brady's, the Aaron Rodgers, they see it like a coach or coordinator and exploit it about every time and rarely miss, just like that. And there's a nice throw. He throws as nice a spiral as you're ever going to see. Jennings on the receiving end. And another set of downs for the Packers. And that's a perfect example of what I was just talking about. A coach is looking at that look and seeing the defensive coverage and going, all right, Greg Jennings is the hot. He's the guy we got to get it to here. Mike saw it pre snap. As I said, a lot of quarterbacks, for one reason or the other, because it's so hard to do, they don't see it and they miss. Aaron Rodgers doesn't miss. Mike McCarthy and him are on the same page. I think they've been a top 10 offense ever since Mike McCarthy got here. They have. And Mike McCarthy as James Darks carries. McCarthy only got streets for the party at Holmgren and Brett Favre. He's going to have a street named after him. He's almost embarrassed about that. A guy from Pittsburgh coming a long way. Aaron Rodgers with 17 touchdown passes was tied with Tom Brady coming in in our game of the week, America's game of the week. A Fox coming up, second half of the doubleheader. You'll see Tom Brady go against the Cowboys and see if he can catch up to Aaron Rodgers, the touchdown pass leader in the NFL. Boy, Tom DeWes Welker has looked virtually unstoppable. He doesn't have the receiver core or the arsenal or the weaponry that Aaron Rodgers has. He's got good players. Those two tight ends are outstanding. But Wes Welker is his security blanket and, and having said that that's really what Sam Bradford misses I think offensively for the St. Louis Rams without his security blanket Chris and Danny Amendola out for the year and has been missing for a lot of the Rams struggles as they remain winless Starks carries again. You know, it was against Atlanta, 12 different receivers, which equaled a, a team record. Seven different receivers for Aaron Rodgers today. It's been a lot of fun coming to Lambeau. You know, you always root for a competitive game, but watching the Packers and Aaron Rodgers as we just broke down, I mean, this is a team you, you just wonder the Super Bowl. The unbeaten record right now. Who's going to get in their way? Who could slow them down? Well, the Detroit Lions, obviously, they've got to go play at San Diego, I believe. They got to go play at the New York Giants. So there's some tough spots in terms of this team still going on the road. The offense in the passing game, 
I don't know how many people are going to really stop it unless you can get real consistent pressure on Aaron Rodgers. We haven't seen that for a good portion of the year. And then defensively, they've got to get some things shored up. They for sure have to get some things shored up. They are not the same defense that they were last year. They, they were not a bend but don't break defense last year. That's certainly been their M.O. Chris this season. Well, and the interchangeable parts as Starks carries for a first down. I mean, they had so many different injuries last year. Players that were out on offense and defense. Remember, Jermichael Finley was out of the picture, Ryan Grant. And those guys are back. So I don't know if you can outscore Green Bay. Right now, the Lions, you mentioned, they're trailing at home to the 49ers by two in the fourth quarter. The Packers don't play the Lions until Thanksgiving, and then they play at the regular season finale. We've hit the two-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. The Packers by 21. Tim Ryan, Chris Byers, Packers in their wrap-it-up mode against the Rams, ready to go to 6-0. And, and the Rams off the bye week to fall to 0-5. The Rams will play at Dallas and then home with New Orleans. Meanwhile, the Packers aren't going to be home for almost a month, Tim. They're at Minnesota. They have an open date at San Diego and then home November 14th against the Vikings. Bonus coverage uh, coming up here. We'll take you to whatever game is hot and happening. The Lions and 49ers in a wild one. The Eagles are leading the Redskins. Well, the schedule makers were brutal to the St. Louis Rams. I mean, including today, four or five on the road. You talked about at Dallas, then the New Orleans Saints coming to town. The first half of their schedule, by far the toughest in the NFL when you look at it. Last time the Rams started out, I'm sorry, the Packers, the last time they started out 6-0 was back in 1965. We talked earlier going back to those throwback jerseys in the 20s when they were the Acme Meat Packers. The, the building doesn't exist, but the... Uh, where Curly Lambeau designed those uniforms with an eye on Notre Dame. There's still a building in that location near the railroad <laughs> tracks. You and I got to take a look at that. A great history here. And this current Packer team with McCarthy and Rodgers, they just keep it right on going. <laughs> Bonus coverage coming up. And don't forget the Patriots and Cowboys, America's game of the week on Fox World Series on Wednesday. Along with Tim Ryan and Chris Myers for our entire production crew. Thanks for being with us. Always a fun stop at Lambeau Field. For Sam Bradford, a 300-yard passing day. Clay Matthews and the Packer defense. They keep the Rams out of the end zone. And Aaron Rodgers, another 300-yard game and three touchdown passes. A 24-3 final, the pack is 6-0. Now let's go to Kurt Benefee at our Fox Studios.